Welcome everybody to Science Wednesday. Today we're gonna talk about viruses. I'm sure you all heard the word viruses these days because it's about the only thing people still talk about. But actually, what is a virus? So a virus is basically a strain of genetic material. A virus is a strain of genetic material. You know what genetic material is, right? Yes, I do. So genetic material is all the information about how your body functions, what you look like, everything about your body. It looks a little bit like this. It has like a double spiral. And these are all the parts of information that tell everything about you. Exactly, Oscar. It's like the instruction to build anything that is alive. So a virus is just a strain of it. Let's imagine this is a strain of genetic information. But uh, it's not only this. If this was floating around, then it would die. So imagine this is a box made out of protein. And the genetic material is inside. And this is a virus, Elska. The genetic material is protected inside a protein box. We have different kind of viruses, so we have different kind of boxes and different kind of genetic material. So we could imagine, for example, we have three viruses here. So now, why is this different to a bacteria or to us? The main difference is that a virus cannot reproduce. We don't consider them to be alive because they cannot reproduce. Let's imagine we have a cell. Cells are the smallest piece that build anything that is alive. For example, us, human beings, we are made out of cells. And so are animals, plants, and bacteria that are made out of only one cell. Cells have the ability to duplicate, what means making copies of themselves, sort of having children. If we start with only one cell, like this one, it can make a copy of its genetic material, that here is a really small circle, and now we have two times the genetic material. Then the cell can split into two pieces, and then at the end we have two times the same cell. We can say then that the first one was the father, and at the end we have two children. Let's see now how a virus duplicates. We start with only one virus. Then we wait for some time, and what do we get? At the end we still only have one virus. Because actually virus cannot duplicate, but then how do they reproduce? Let's have a look at this virus. If it wants to duplicate, it will need to find a cell, like this one here. Then the virus will enter the cell, and once it is inside, it can start reproducing and making new viruses inside of the cell. Once the cell is full of viruses, these viruses will leave, and after the cell will probably die. So what about Elska? If we travel back in time and we go and see when the viruses were discovered. I would love that. I'm okay, ready. then let's go. Let's go. We are going back to Russia around 1890, so only 130 years from now. Here we have Dmitry Ivanovsky, who is a scientist studying why some tobacco plants are dying. To make experiments, he took some of the leaves from the plant that were sick and then he went to his lab. In the lab, he put the leaves in some water and then smashed them to make the leaves release everything that they have inside into the water. And he passed all the water through a very special filter that would not allow any bacteria to go through. He used this filter water in some healthy plants. When he came back, the plants were sick. But if the water had no bacteria, then there must be something in the water that was smaller than a bacteria and was infecting the plants. That's how he discovered the existence of viruses. What did we learn today? A virus is a string of genetic material inside of a protein cover. There are different types of viruses. They are smaller than cells. Viruses are not considered living creatures because they cannot reproduce. They were discovered 130 years ago in Russia. Um, 
thank you everybody for watching this was it for today but we will have another video soon so please please keep watching stay tuned and be safe see ya bye bye